How's it going everyone and in this video we are going to be talking about z-score in statistics and so I think the best way for us to learn this stuff is to just walk through an example problem where we're going to see why it's useful and so in this following question statement we're told that we have a population of runners that has a mean resting heart rate of 60 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 12 beats per minute and so if we randomly sampled 16 runners we want to know what is the likelihood that the average resting heart rate of this population of our sample is going to be less than 66 beats per minute. And so this is where z-score is going to come into this picture. And so z-score is the following, and I'm just going to write this equation out and we'll talk about it. So we've got z is equal to mu s, that is the average of your sample, minus mu p, that is going to be the average of your population, and we're going to divide this thing by the standard error that is present. And so what is that standard error term? Standard error, and I'll try to write clearly, I apologize if this isn't coming through, but standard error is equivalent to the standard deviation of your population divided by the square root of the sample size of your sample. And so how many people did you look at? And so with that out of the way, we can now look at the terms that are given to us in our problem statement. So 60 beats per minute would map to the mu p term, the average of our population, and 66, less than 66 beats per minute is what's going to map to the mu s term of our z formula. And then next what we want to do is identify which terms in here are going to correspond to our standard error formula, and that's going to be the sigma p, the standard deviation of our population, which was 12, and our sample size was 16. So with all this, we can now begin to determine what our z value is. And then from there, we're gonna look it up in a table to see what this probability ultimately is. So what we do is we're going to first calculate what standard error is. So standard error will be equal to that uh, standard deviation of our population, which we were told was 12. We're going to divide this by the square root of our sample size, which was 16. 12 over square root of 16 is equal to 12 over 4, 12 over 4, which is equal to 3. And so we know that our standard error is 3. We're going to take this term and we're going to plug it into z. And so now what we do is we're going to say that z is equal to the average of our sample, which was 66 beats per minute. We're going to subtract this from the average of our population, which was 60, and we're going to divide this by our standard error, which was three. And now what we end up getting here is the following. So we would have six over three, which is equal to 2.00, and that is Z. And so what do you do now that you've got Z? So with this value, now that we know that z was 2.0, we look to a z-score table. And so on this z-score table, you want to be really careful and make sure that you are looking at the correct table because sometimes people are looking at the probability of this region, that you're going to have values over uh, a given average. Um, but in our case, we wanted to determine which, what is the probability that the average of our sample will be less than a given value relative to our uh, population average and so in this case we are interested in this guy right here and so this table and these tables really should show you pictures of what's going on is going to be really helpful for us because it's telling us these values right here and so this is just a bunch of probabilities that uh, your sample falls within the population parameters. And so with that, now what we can say is let's find, figure out what probability maps to a z-score of 2.0. So we first look at this first column here, and we're gonna go down to this line right here, and because our value was 2.00, uh, we are going to also look at this first column right here, and we're gonna see that this uh, corresponds to a probability of uh, 0 0.9772. And so what this means 
is that we have a 97.72% chance that if we randomly sampled uh, 16 runners in this population, their resting heart rate is going to be less than 66 beats per minute. We can modify this question statement slightly and ask which percentage of population, um, or what's the probability that in this uh, population we'd have a heart rate greater than 66 beats per minute. And because we know that these probabilities must add up to one, we can do the following. So if we just did one minus probability that it's less than uh, 66 beats per minute, and I'll try to write this out more clearly, the probability that our um, sample average was less than 66 beats per minute. And that is going to tell us that this guy is equal to 2.3% that we exceed that value. So that's basically telling us that the area under this curve must sum up to one. And so that is how you use z-scores and standard errors in order to determine these types of likelihoods. I hope that this video is helpful. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.